Hi and welcome to Cycle Maintenance Academy. Um, I'm Arik and today I have a very special guest. It's Steven from Wheels uh, Manufacturing and Steven will tell us a little bit about gear mechanics. Hello Stephen. Hi Eric. Um, how are you? Are you okay? I'm doing good. Good, good. Um, tell, can you tell us a little bit about uh, mech hangers? Yeah, of course. Uh, it's one of our main product lines and we make um, about 700 mech hangers out of maybe the 2,000 that we know exist. They're, they're a great replacement part. They're kind of designed to absorb an impact in a crash, uh, protect your frame, protect your derailleur, and take the brunt of the impact. Okay. Can you tell us why some bikes do have a gear hangers and the others don't? Especially, uh, for example, the steel frame bikes, they don't uh, necessarily have a gear mech hangers, but other bikes do. Why is that? Um, it's kind of a hangover from an older style. So a lot of the old original frames, um, kind of 70s, 80s, 90s, uh, had an integrated hanger. And that just mounted the derailleur directly to the frame. But in the event of a crash, that damaged the frame and you either had to weld on a replacement or just the frame was trash in the event of a crash. So uh, the replaceable derailleur hanger was uh, in innovation uh, back in the day that kind of prevented that. Saved the frame, saved the derailleur, and just kind of improved the life of the rider in the, cr in the event of a crash. Okay. So you've mentioned um, you producing about seven to eight hundred different hangers, and there's even more uh, uh, produced, more designs. Um, can you tell us why there are so many different designs? Why there isn't just one gear mech hanger that fits all bikes? Well, um, it's kind of complicated, like most things in the bike industry. Uh, the bike industry doesn't like standards that much, and so my belief is kind of it often gets left to the last minute in the frame design process bike companies will design a frame and then at the end of the process they say okay we need to put the derailleur in this position in respect to the frame and so they will then just make a bracket to fit that distance some companies will try and are, are pretty good at reusing old mech hangers uh trek is a good example of that however even uh in within that uh, SRAM and Shimano will, uh, five to seven years down the road, change the standard. And so then Trek would have to go back and update the mech hanger to update to the new positioning of the derailleur in relation to the frame. And so even when they can reuse hangers, they eventually do have to update them anyway. And um, can you tell us... In the, in the, in the event of um, the gear, when the gear hanger breaks and it has to be replaced, what is the way to find a replacement gear hanger? Is there any any um, any step, any process you can go through to um, find which of these uh, over two thousand hangers will, will will fit your bike? It's it's a process. You're you're right there. The there's a kind of a couple different options. Um, one that we prefer, obviously, we have a hanger finder on our website, and for any frames that we've been able to catalog. Uh, you can search by your frame manufacturer, year, and model and see if we have a compatible hanger. I'll just say that I will, I will add the link to the uh, Wheels Manufacturing website so you, um, it can help you to find the gear hanger in the description below. Um, other options are obviously trying the original manufacturer of the frame, see if they have replacements available. Um, if it's a, especially if it's a newer frame, they often will. Uh, older frames, it's pretty hit or miss. Kind of the third option is just Google. You typically want to start with the frame manufacturer and then it can devolve into how many screws does it have? Does it mount to the inside or the outside of the frame? It, it gets very niche. What thread pitch is your through axle? All of those things may influence what hanger you need. So let's say that I did find 
uh, on, the, on the internet, I did find the right hunger, but there are fewer options. Some of them um, cost very little and the other are more expensive. What, what's the difference? There are uh, a couple different ways that hangers are made typically. Uh, a lot of the cheaper hangers are cast, in which case they, they make a mold of the hanger and then inject the metal into the mold and then it spits out a finished part. Uh, additionally, there is a fully machined hanger. Typically, the cast hangers will be a little weaker. They look uh, a little more rounded and smooth and uh, are often also silver. Fully machined hangers, they can get anodized in many colors. Uh, they, the edges are a little crisper and also they're machined from billet aluminum, which tends to be stronger. Additionally, depending on the manufacturer of the bike, some hangers may be made in titanium or other kind of more exotic metals, uh, which can help with strength, but in general, uh, just standard 6061 aluminum is kind of the sweet spot of price to performance. And you've mentioned to me when we, when we spoke off the camera that SRAM has introduced a new type of hanger and that's getting more and more popular. Can you tell us a little bit more about that as well? Yes, that's the SRAM UDH and that they introduced uh, around 2017 or 18, I believe, as kind of uh, the, the standard for hangers. It was meant to kind of replace this whole mess of 2000 hangers with one. And it's really taken off in the mountain biking industry, especially. It's starting to make some inroads in gravel and road, but less so. Um, but it looks kind of like some of this. Uh, it's designed to rotate in the event of an impact and it kind of attaches through the frame. So it's a very specific frame mounting. They made the standard open to all frame manufacturers and well, all, all manufacturers and said, here is a design you can use. The big change that it required was all frame manufacturers now are responsible for getting the geometry right for that SRAM hanger, which SRAM has specified. What that has led to is it, it, it has actually helped. There are less hangers being produced because so many are using the UDH. Additionally, SRAM has since released their SRAM transmission. That uses the exact same frame mounting without any hanger at all. And so we believe Shimano is likely following suit in the next, well, possibly this year. And that is kind of opening up new avenues for where the future of biking may go. Okay, um, can you also um, uh, give a little advice to our viewers? And would you um, uh, personally uh, advise people to carry a spare gear mech hanger with you? For any, really for any ride, yes. Um, the key is you need to also bring the tools to install it. I myself have been on a 100 mile ride and crashed and needed my replacement hanger. And I had it and I was able to finish the ride. Depending on the severity of the crash, you may be able to tweak the hanger back into alignment enough to finish. You may not be able to shift, but you could finish the ride. But in some instances, the hanger will just snap in half and without a replacement, you're done. A while ago, um, you, there was a possibility to find um, um, what is called emergency hunger. Are they any good? Like the name suggests, they can be used in an emergency, but they're actually kind of disappearing these days because they relied on a skewer to hold the emergency hanger on the outside of a frame. And with most bikes these days going to through axles, there is now nothing to actually hold the emergency hanger onto the bike, and so they are kind of disappearing. Okay, that's great. Stephen, thank you very much for sharing your knowledge with us. Um, dear viewers, um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed um, information in this video. Um, if you want to um, support this channel, then don't forget to subscribe, like, um, and uh, if you want to support it even further, then consider becoming a channel member um, because it's a great way to, to support this channel, but also to get some amazing perks just for you. Thanks very much, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you, Stephen. Thanks, Eric. Cheers.